clean, classy, perfected skin. In this tutorial today is what I'm bringing you and showing you how to get a very nice balance in your makeup for daytime or date night. Hello my friends, I hope that you're all doing well today. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending a bit of your time with me. We are going to be doing this look right here. I wanted this look to be, that's Smuckers, hi Smuckers. Uh, I wanted this look to be very balanced and I want it to be very clean look. So I didn't want the eyes to be overdone. I didn't want the lips to be overdone. I chose a very neutral kind of palette to go all the way through this. Um, I wanted everything to look very polished, very clean, but lots of people just like to have things diffused. And so I wanted to bring you a very natural look too. I hope that you do enjoy this. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up before we start the video. If you have any questions, let me know down below. I'd be happy to help you with those. We're getting a lot of people here, friends, and I'm having a hard time keeping up with the comments, especially right now while I'm going through my health issues. I promise you that I read everything, but I don't necessarily have the time to stop and give comments to everybody, and I apologize for that, because that is one of my most treasured things about YouTube, is being able to interact with you. So please know that I'm not trying to be a slacker, and I'm trying to get around to every comment. I love you guys very, very much. Thank you for all of your support. Let's get into this tutorial so you can see how I got this look. Clean and classy, office appropriate, and it can be natural everyday makeup as well. So since the focus is gonna be on our skin, let's make sure we can do everything possible to make our skin look as good as possible. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tissue and I'm just gonna blot all over my face. That helps out so much with if you're oily or if you have breakthrough through your T-zone, because if you've done your skincare and you have excess moisture on there, you're not going to want that to be on there for your foundation. It's going to make your foundation move around. The next thing I do is I put a little bit of primer on my large pores, and this is one that I've loved for years. It's NYX Angel Veil. It is a little bit thicker of a primer, so I use quite a bit less on it. I'm just going to use about that much, and you get it warmed up in your fingers and then really press it into the areas where you know that you have large pores and that kind of thing. All right, before I go in with any base products, I'm going to just line this waterline with my Wet n Wild pencil. That just really brightens up that waterline, so if there's any redness, any darkness in there, then it looks brighter. Please remember that I do have a disability, which is a palsy in my hands, so I do shake. It has been in the past why I have kind of shied away from doing tutorials, because I know that it can be really distracting for my hands to shake. I have had it my whole life. It seems to be getting worse the older I get, and that's okay, because I don't let it get in the way of what I wanna do. All right, next is the Pixie by Petra color corrector, and I believe this one is in Brightening Peach. I think they have a darker one. I got this probably a week and a half ago on um, you guys' suggestion when I did the dupe video on the Charlotte Tilbury. It is really good. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to go everywhere on your face with this color corrector that you find that you have spots that just bug you. And I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna like just push up against them and dot. I'm not going to rub it in, I'm just going to dot. And you will be really surprised at how much this covers because you're not like spreading it around and yes this will work you just have to trust me now if you have redness on your cheeks do a little bit on your cheeks that you can push around because that's going to cover really well it does have great coverage to it i do like that and then down around the nose where we get female hormonal redness you need to do that um color correcting as your first step really does help save steps later. And it will really help you with not having to use so much concealer, which can be a really huge problem for us. As we age, it gets too thick, too cakey, then it settles in lines. So this is kind of a really important step for me myself. I just love using a color corrector. Once you have your color corrector everywhere you want to, you're gonna use a primer on your eyes. And this is probably the only high-end product in this video, everything else is very affordable, but I feel like this is affordable because this is my ride or die eyeshadow primer. The reason is, is because it is so 
opaque that all of that darkness that you're seeing on the top of my eyes right now is going to completely disappear with this and you need so little that tube is the mini tube right here and i think this has lasted me almost two years it's that good so i'm just going to take care of all of that darkness with this eyeshadow primer and next step is to buff some powder over everything before we go in with foundation if you haven't seen that technique that's the video i was talking about this is the elf halo glow setting powder this one is in medium so it does have a little bit of a uh, kind of a yellow cast you can use translucent powder absolutely you can use whatever powder you want it works really well with the more finely milled the powder is the better that i find that this goes on and this elf powder is very finely milled so see that product that's in the lid that's what i'm going to use to begin with and i want you to completely cover your face you don't have to go in with a super heavy hand but you do need to completely cover everything including that under eye area right now and the reason is is it's going to look so much better if you use a little bit of powder under there before you go in with any other um, liquid products or cream products and I'm just kind of buffing right now. There's nothing more on my brush at all. Now, if you do feel like you need more because you're oily through this T-zone, go ahead and turn that cap upside down again and you get a little bit more in there and just pick that up and go through the T-zone. The foundation that I'm using is the number seven Airbrush Away foundation. Mine is in Cool Ivory. So I just kind of turn it upside down and put some on there. That's way too much. With this particular technique, you don't have to use a ton of foundation. This is Bella Jade setting spray that I get off of Amazon. It has no alcohol in it. Great for mature skin because it really does not dry out. And I put one spray on this e.l.f. brush and then I'm just going to really lightly dot the foundation around and then I'm going to buff this foundation in and you will need so much less foundation than you think you will when you get to your eyes you don't want to um, you know drag off the color corrector that we put on there so make sure that you're dabbing and I do a lot of dabbing anyway with my brush because it just works better it's kind of a stippling motion and if you've ever stippled with a paintbrush or anything like that you know that you get a little bit more coverage on your canvas and that is kind of what we're we're looking for we want that coverage without being cakey and that's what this brush and this particular routine gives you i absolutely love the way your foundation looks when you're done with that technique now if you need a little bit of extra coverage you can go in again with a, uh, any sort of a concealer you want to i am only going to put a tiny bit right here and then i'm going to work that in with that same brush and that way it still has the foundation on it so it's going to kind of all meld together in a beautiful color for your under eyes instead of it being too light or too dark wherever you put it because now you have foundation and concealer mixed together so it's going to be almost like a gradient if you use a lighter one not uh, sure why i didn't do my eyes first but let's go in and do them i'm going I in with the soft and sultry palette from milani had this forever and this is my second one i love it and i'm going to go in with the lighter color right here when you're doing a very clean look always pick a color that you think is going to be two or three shades lighter than what you really want your your end look to look like all right so going into that very light color i'm using a wayne goss brush i think it's a number 18 i got this years ago in a beautylish lucky bag by the way who got a lucky bag this year i got one and i for the first time in years um, since i've been getting it i actually got to score a a large one all right so all we're going to do is shade this crease a little bit, use it as the transition color a little bit. And the way my eyes are, and if you have hooded eyes, you probably have to do this too. You go into the crease, but you're above the crease a little bit with the transition color. And for me with mature eyes, when I want a really clean look, I'm going to just use a couple of colors. I'm going to bring that color out here to the tail. No windshield wiper motions for me, because not only does that deposit um, too much color, it actually can skip on me because my eyelids are a little bit more movable. Hello, Ollie again. And um, we are just going to buff this and it's going to just be a very soft wash of a shadow up there. Taking a flat paddle brush, I'm gonna go into the lightest color on there. This is a matte. And again, I'm not using colors that are shimmer or anything because we want this to be a very classic look and can you see that didn't deposit any color on there 
let's go to the finger so i'm going to go into there and i'm going to just pull that color across and we're going to brighten that lid a lot so we put down a lot more with our finger than we did with just using the brush all right with my luxie 213 i'm going to go into this brown color right here and very lightly because again i want my eyes to show up but i don't want them to be to be smoky or anything like that we're just trying to make a very clean look here and i always go right out here in the crease and then out on that outer v or that outer third of my eyelid to bring the two colors together another thing is if you do have trouble with your eye look looking muddy too quickly or looking too dark too quickly make sure that you've just barely touch your brush in the tip of your brush in there and then, then if you're finding that the brush isn't you know blending well push that brush into a mirror or a little plate or anything glass plate whatever you have push it in there and then it's going to get some of the product down into the brush then you can tap it off and then you don't have any extra going in there that's going to make you look too dark too fast all right go back in with your wet and wild pencil and just arch on those brows a little bit because what now don't leave them like that what i love about this pencils is it's so creamy and it's going to blend into that um, eyeshadow and make that eyeshadow look super soft but it's going to bring that eyebrow up and that is so important if you have a lot of darkness in here go ahead and use it right in that inner corner all right let's work on the brows the thing you want to remember about your eyebrows is never ever bring your eyebrow product below where your natural line is because if you bring that down and you're really filling it in down here you're going to find that basically it's going to pull that eye down make your eye look smaller so if you're just going up there high as you can with it and then maybe just bring it a little bit wider right up there or a little bit higher you're going to like your eyebrows a lot more the other thing is make them just a tiny bit thicker than you're comfortable with and my daughter taught me this because she has these most beautiful formed eyebrows she does great eyebrows i don't do great eyebrows because of my palsy but um she taught me that if you do it a little bit thicker you look a little bit more youthful and i love that so what i'm using for an eyebrow product is one i actually just picked up at cvs and it's a wet and wild palette for brows so you have two powders here and then you have a wax so i'm going to start with that powder right there i don't know if this is going to be too warm for me go ahead and tap that off and then i'm just going to try and put that through my brows in the most natural way possible i am not going to show you the whole thing on putting my brows on because i shake so bad and it does take me a long time to do this so be right back Okay, so that is a little bit too warm. I'm gonna go back to my trusty e.l.f. Um, this is the Wow Brow, and I think this one is in taupe or soft brown. I'll make sure I throw it up on the screen for you. Okay, so can you see how making, making the eyebrows just a little bit thicker is really framing the eyes and making them look a little bit bigger? I really like that technique. So Keep in mind that eyebrows are not twins, they're sisters, and sometimes they're sisters that fight, sometimes they're sisters that don't like each other, and so we just have to do with them okay i've gotten so used to doing contour that it's just a part of my routine this is not something that you necessarily need however i find that if i'm going for a classy look or if i'm going for a clean look it's nice to have my face framed and it's also nice to have it kind of you know defined in certain places so the sculpt and glow from folklore cosmetics this is a huge kind of fan brush that I got. I think I got it off of, it's an aesthetic brush, but I think I got it off of Amazon a long time ago. And I'm going to go ahead and do my high forehead. And I like this brush because it's not going to deposit a ton, but it's going to give me enough, but it's going to buff out so pretty. And I just, I really like that. So I'm going to do the cheekbones. If you want an in-depth tutorial on this, I do have several. I know that you're all wondering why I haven't put more powder on top of my foundation or why I haven't done my setting spray. That is because I will do it at the very end and that will lock in all this other powder. And once I do that contour, then I'm gonna go in with a little bronzer. This is the Milani Silky Matte Bronzer in Sunkissed. This is a very cool toned bronzer that I do like. This is a Sonia Kashuk brush. 
I will make sure I link all of these below for you. I have found some great brushes lately and yeah, just really love these Sonia Kashuk ones from uh, Target. Okay, I am doing a light dusting where the sun would normally hit you with the bronzer. So the sun normally hits our nose, our cheeks, our chin, and our forehead. And that just helps to warm up the entire look and give you a little bit more life. I know that a lot of people don't like to do both contour and bronzer. I'm doing them here, but you don't have to. Remember that. If you only like to do um, a bronzer, just kind of, you know, sweep it a little bit extra right there in the contour if you want to. Um, if you have a high forehead like I do, it just helps disguise that a lot. And yeah, so I like to do both, but you definitely don't have to. All right, next for highlighter, again, I'm using an aesthetic Aesthetica brush. This is a really loose brush and it's just really airy and nice and I'm using the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter This is a tried and true be tried and true beauty that we have and I'm just going to put that on my cheeks before I put my blush on and it's just going to Illuminate underneath the blush so that you have a very glowy look instead of people seeing the highlighter before they see your face I don't do a lot of highlighter anywhere else, but I will do it on my cupid's bow right here with my finger for blush i want it to be kind of a cool tone peachy pink color this is a color pop blush this is catch my vibe i'm pretty sure they still have this this is a beautiful blush as well and i'm going to put this one on before i go in with my cream product just like we talked about with the patrick ta that i showed you guys powder before cream who thought this up? The crazy people in the makeup world. So we're, we're just continuing to try out powder before cream on everything. And the cream product that I am using is from Zing Beauty. This is a dual-sided um, blush or cheek product, and it's really pretty. I do like this a lot, and I just take that stipple brush, and this is a pretty, pretty pink. It's really bright, so you're not going to need a lot. And what's beautiful about this stipple brush is it doesn't put on too much too quickly, and I really like that. Remember to tie everything together. So you don't want to like blush here, no blush across. Just a light little dusting to kind of bring your blush together. Cross your chin, down your neck if you do need that a little bit. Just remember things need to be tied in together. We're not like, okay, this is our head and our neck and we just kind of separate them. We don't do any makeup here. I always put my makeup down my neck. So that's just one way to kind of keep everything cohesive and looking um, good across the palette here. I want you to take a peek at that blush and look at the highlighter underneath it. This is a very natural, very soft highlighter. It just works so well on mature skin. That is a tip that I absolutely love. All right, the next tip is absolutely up to whether or not you feel like your pores look really big still. You don't have to do this, but this is more powder from elf and i'm just going in with a fluffy powder brush And what i'm going to do is i'm just going to buff it into this area right here on my cheeks My nose my chin and my forehead there wasn't very much product on there But buffing it will diffuse the look of all those pores Instead of if you just swept it across you're going to be like hitting the high points of the pores And then you won't have it go down into your pores and kind of fill them up and make them look really blurred And that is a technique that I learned a long time ago and I love it You just really really buff that powder in It's also nice if you do it through this area because then it's going to set that if you do have that breakthrough through that t-zone That's what I do. There was hardly any powder So keep that in mind and notice that I didn't put any underneath my eyes. I definitely don't do that. What I do use is a setting spray. This is a new one from Essence. This is the Fix and Last 18 Hour Fixing Spray. Again, this says that it's waterproof and it gives you a matte effect, which is nice. If you don't like the matte effect, you can use something more dewy. I'm going to use this because I don't want any sort of a dewy look underneath my eyes. So I'm going to start with, with that there. I'm going to use a brush. Sabrina taught me this. I was watching one of her videos and she actually sprayed her her brush by the way this has no alcohol in it so it's a fixing spray a setting spray with no alcohol so i'm just going to spray this brush a couple times you know what else i love about this technique that she showed is that if you get a really nasty sprayer this is not a good sprayer it spits all over gives too much it's not a fine mist if you put it on your brush then you don't have droplets all over you don't have to worry about that so she puts it on her brush and i'm just going to shake it off so it kind of gets in there a little bit better and then i'm just going to start on the places where I have the worst 
breakthrough to make sure that they get the most attention. And the other thing I love about this technique, right underneath the eyes, because that's where that concealer has to be set down. She was a genius when she showed this. I think she might have gotten it from somewhere else, but I love this technique. So just spray that. I think I just sprayed the camera. Spray that brush and then just go over your areas all over your face and it's going to set your makeup down for all day long. I love this. Actually pushing that setting spray in. One thing I will warn you about, if you do have really dry under eyes and you use this too much under the eyes, you're gonna find that you're gonna get real dry throughout the day. So you'll find a, a good balance once you start to play with it a little bit. Isn't makeup, oh, I've got a little itch on my nose, pardon me. Um, isn't makeup always about just finding the perfect balance for you. So if you have a lot of breakthrough under your eyes, you might need to use more. Me, I have a lot of dryness and crepiness. I use less, just enough to set that. No powder whatsoever there. Now I'm gonna take a smudger brush and I'm not gonna use liner today. You can use liner first if you want to. I find using liner and then shadow on top of it to buff it out just gives you such a bulletproof look. For this particular look, I'm wanting to go a lot more soft. So I don't necessarily, I always get a little bit too ham with them. I don't know why, but um, I'm going to go into that color right there that I did for the crease color. And we are going to just stick out here on about the last quarter of the eye. I'm not going any further in because I want this to look really polished and you can take that buffer and just pull up the crease a little bit. That helps your eye get a little bit more defined without getting too out of control when you just pull a little bit of that shadow up. All right, let's bring a little bit extra light to those eyes. Let's go in with that highlighter and a flat paddle brush and or a defining brush and let's just go into that corner and brighten that up. All right, for lips, I am using the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Lip Liner, and this is in Mar Marvelous, Marvelous. Anyway, what I'm gonna show you this, but I can't talk while I'm doing it. I'm gonna bring this Cupid's bow a little bit above my lip line, just barely, and right down here, I'm gonna bring it a little bit below to make my lips look as big as possible. So can you, you see how I just started that right there? That's clear underneath my lip line. Same thing right here at the Cupid's bow. And then I'm gonna just fill those in on the outside here a little bit. So it will give a little bit of an ombre look when I do my lipstick. The lipstick I'm using is Nude Lust from um, Maybelline. Love this lipstick. Love every one of Maybelline's lipsticks. This is a matte formula. And then the Maybelline Lifter Gloss, and I don't know what color this one is, but it's going up on the screen so you can see it. Love this gloss, oh my gosh. Makes the prettiest pout. You can do a black liner, you can do a brown liner, whichever you want. I'm going to tight line my upper lash line. It really helps with defining the lashes and makes the lashes look a lot more bold. This one is from Tarte. I was going to use my NYX one, but it's like disappeared. So I have no idea where it is. This is a duo ended one. So this will probably be the second product in here that is an all drugstore. This has um, got your regular pencil on this side, your smudger cold pencil on this side, and then the felt tip one on this side. Love it for that, but there are drugstore options as well, but I don't have a brown in anything else other than this. I am going to curl these lashes, put some of this liner on, and then I will be right back with you. By the way, the mascara that I used today is the Essence 24 Ever Bold Volume Mascara, and this is a new release for them. I do have a video where I demoed this. I think it was the video right before this one. So go ahead and check that out. Put and some pretty earrings on and you are all polished and ready to go. That is the final look. I hope that you guys did enjoy this. Let's get pretty close so that you can see everything. Well, it's definitely very balanced. The cheeks, the eyes, the lips, all of that is very balanced. The skin is the focus, I feel like, because we want our skin to look radiant and glowing, and now you know how I do that. If you would like to amp up this look, you can do it very easily by taking a highlighter and putting it across the lid. Let let me just show you what that will do really quickly. I'm just taking a brush right here and I'm just going to take a highlighter and put it across the lid. It's gonna brighten this up just a little bit more. So this is not a high metallic. It's just kind of a light shimmer. 
and it's going to bring a little bit more light to the eyes and hi smuckers and ollie one last time thanks so much for spending some of your time with me please give this video a thumbs up on your way out of here what did you think of it let me know if you like seeing me do these where i give you little tips all along the way of how we can improve our armature makeup and definitely this is office appropriate and you could just amp it up for date night if you wanted to later love you guys very much take care of yourselves catch you in my next video bye friends <laughs>